How's it going guys? My name is Alex Barham. Uh, I get a ton of questions about buying boats and one of the topics I haven't covered yet is sizing. Sizing boats is absolutely nothing like a pair of pants. It is hard to know sometimes what size a boat even is, let alone figure out if it's the right one for you. So for starters, now since 2015, most boats have a small, medium, large designation, but before that it was usually a model name and then a number. So a Project X56, a Diesel 70. Usually what those numbers meant were a, either a length or a volume, a unit of measurement. So for a while they were doing length in tenths. So a Dagger Nomad 8.5 was the eight and a half foot Nomad. And you just had to know that that was the larger one and the smaller one was an 8.1. Or if you wanted a playboat, that the Project X56 was a 56 gallon playboat and that most mediums were around 50, most smalls were in the 40s and most larges were in the 60s. This all worked and it didn't work in the same way that just calling something a medium or a large works and it doesn't work. But where the rubber really meets the road is when you go to the manufacturer's specs for the boat and you look at what the recommended paddler weight range is. The problem often becomes that these ranges are enormous. Some for creek boats go all the way into like 140 pounds. Well, how can someone both weigh, you know, 130 and 240 pounds and this boat be right for you? Obviously, it really can't. For starters, what I usually say is if you're on the outskirts of a boat's range, it's probably not the boat for you. So take the outer 20%, throw them away. Now being at that 60 to 80% weight range, the boat is going to feel a little sluggish and at the 20 to 40% weight range, the boat is going to feel pretty sporty because you're pretty light in it. So let's call the heavier side a bobber and the lighter side a floater. Those are the two terms that I was introduced to uh, by some of the Piranha guys. Personally, I tend to choose boats and recommend boats where the paddler is either in the middle or in the floater side. The rationale for me is that if you're really looking for that big boofs, skips out, bow stays dry style of paddling, you just need to be in a bigger boat. Bigger boats are going to speed up in less strokes, have less draft in shallow creeks, and generally just perform at a higher level. Now some paddlers don't want that. They want a boat that's going to be a little bit slower, it's a little bit smaller, that is going to take more work to point in a given direction, but once it's pointed in, different, in a set direction, it is harder for the river to push it off course. That would be a bobber. Why do I always recommend floaters over bobbers? Well, it's pretty simple. You know, as we get older, first of all, we tend to put on weight, not lose it. And second of all, just because you're demoing a boat in a pool or on a nice sunny day doesn't mean that when you put on a dry suit, take a throw bag, pin kit, first aid kit, maybe even go overnighting, that you're not going to accumulate weight inside of that boat. The main reason though is that I feel that the level of performance that comes out of being lighter in the boat is unbelievable. There's no other way in my mind to get boats that are as sporty, fast, aggressive as just being a little bit on the smaller side. Yes, to get the full performance that requires a little bit of muscle, but by being in that boat, you'll A, really improve your technique and B, you'll build that muscle. So I would rather do that than put someone in a smaller size boat. 
The biggest pushback I typically get from people about going to a larger size boat is they're worried that in micro creaking situations, they're going to not fit in eddies. Well, I got news for you. It's very rare that there's an eddy that you can fit a boat in where if it was six inches longer, you just wouldn't fit. I mean, split that in half, and if you're squeaking around a rock, that's three inches. So if it, it's really that big a deal that you miss by three inches, usually it's more of a question of technique than what boat you're in. Now, I've talked about creakers. What about play boats, half slice, slicey boats? Slicey boats, I think EJ said it best, cram into whatever you can fit in and go nuts. For half slices, you know, I really think a lot of people are going to come down to personal preference. If you want to get truly radical, you can absolutely step down a size. If you're looking for one boat to do everything, you want to be probably on the floater end of the equation. And if this is specifically a quiver boat where you're going to take it out in just the right situations, then probably dead in the middle. For play boats, it is extremely difficult for me to give blanket advice. But what I can say about paddling a slightly larger boat is you're going to get a lot more pop. My sessions typically last longer in a larger boat just because I'm more comfortable. River running is vastly improved and I prefer the on wave performance. The boat's faster, looser, and I feel like because there's more surface area on my rails when I initiate moves and more rocker profile to work with that my aerials on waves go significantly bigger. Obviously, cartwheels are going to be tougher and some hole moves might be a little bit more difficult, but technique and strength can easily overcome that. So what's the biggest takeaway here? Try before you buy and be open-minded. I see a lot of people at festivals who are paddling boats where the water is all the way at the bolt holes for their foot block. That is clearly too heavy. Try something smaller. Be willing to work on technique and building strength and definitely give larger boats a try. You'll be amazed at what you find. Finally, if these videos are a help to you, please consider supporting the people who support me. Mountain Man Outdoors will ship anywhere in the States and will even help you get into Canada. Please reach out, check out the website, and support the people who make this possible.